Hello, so I think we're just gonna do it. If I told you how long I just have been pacing upstairs, <laughs> Nigel, how long? It's a very long time. I have just been thinking about how to correctly say this to you guys. This is, um, this is something that I have wanted to talk about for um, exactly a year now. This, it's overwhelming to talk about because it's just like, la la la, let's just do it, okay. Well, if it wasn't for the Spice Girls, as always, I wouldn't have found out that it was Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It's October. I don't really read into the media much because that is part of my survival skill is I just create my own universe and I like to stay in that bubble that's a great place for me but anyway last night I was scrolling through Mel B's Instagram and I was seeing the posts and then I have obviously heard about the abuse that's happening well it's always been happening but all of the amazing talented people that have been speaking up recently about abuse in the entertainment industry yes it does happen to all of us and i am currently in the healing process of some pretty major shit so i was like okay wow it's time the universe has decided <laughs> so Domestic violence is something I have, I've lived with um, most of my life. Actually, that's why I ran away from home is because my stepdad at the time used to very badly abuse me and my little sister, Pema. And it was September 11th, uh, V1, and shit hit the fan. And... Uh, he attacked us so badly and he picked up my little sister, little baby Pema, and threw her down our bus, the home steps are here. He threw her out of the door onto the hair field. And I was in the hair, just looking out at her and that visual has stayed with me for life and I'm guilty for life for not bringing her with me. But anyway, I had to go. It, <laughs> It was like too much, I can't see that shit. Um, so I left home, so you know, I mean, it's made me who I am. Um, but yes, it, exactly a year ago, from the most recent event, and I was upstairs thinking about, oh, fucking, who am I talking to? Like. Who is my audience? What is my angle? The fucking everything, you know? <clears throat> and I was like, just be real. So here I am. As you can see, whoever is watching right now, you can see um, that I am affected. But usually, you know, we just go on with the show. The show must go on. You know, and we don't talk about it, boom, boom, like my song I just put out. Um, but I speak through my art, and that's why I feel like my fan base, they are my tribe, because we do all speak the same language. Wherever you are in the whole world, we speak the language of music. And um, so, you know, we're on a frequency, and we can all connect. So I know that if I could be inspired by a story that I'm hearing from a Spice Girl, then there must be people out there that are inspired by me, so then I should speak up. So I'm going to tell you, a year ago, my nan was passing and I had to go to England to see her before she went to the next place. And I asked the on-off bastard boyfriend to come with me. I paid for everything and la la la, even took him to my bus. Woo! That doesn't happen, motherfucker. Anyway, uh, 
yeah, I, um, I took him to Camden. I was like, come on, I want to show you a good time because you're, you know, you seem miserable, whatever. Anyway, da da da. One morning, that's it. He leaped up and started attacking me. Next thing I know, I'm on the fucking floor near the door being strangled. And I then realized, hmm, I'm not as strong as you. I <laughs> can't do anything right now. Um, and I like stopped breathing. And at that point, I realized how serious this is. You know, that we can dodge around the situation as much as we want, but this is serious. I knew, I knew that I, I didn't have the most power in that moment, and it was terrifying. Anyway, I managed to jump up, and I ran out of the house, fucking no trousers on or anything, and had someone in the street call the police, and they took me to hospital and went through the whole thing, and he ran. Um, but I decided to follow this through and actually tell the police, yes, I do want to take this to court. Mm -hmm. So I did. So this time last year, exactly to the day, um, it's a month before my court date was last year. <clears throat> and I was so terrified. First of all, who likes court? Nobody. But, you know, after not saying, <laughs> do you like my mug? <laughs> um, after not talking up about my stepdad at the time, I felt an extra need to have to do this for myself this time. So I did, and I went to court, and he didn't show up, and because uh, he had a toothache. That's a true story, okay. Um, but anyway, you know, they could see how serious the situation was and I won and I feel I feel so good for doing that because I feel like I didn't just do that for myself when I went through that process as tough as it was I felt like I'm taking one for the team you know like and that's how that's how I see my fan base or just like you know fucking anyone I can I connect with you know it's like I'm the kind of person who's like you know what I'll fucking go out there and take one so you guys don't have to um, but yeah, so I won, but, uh, you know, still like, <laughs> obviously I'm a bit affected. It messes with your head. You know, you're convinced, um, well, all sorts of things, but belittled, you know, a lot in the industry because, uh, you know, power, <laughs> just say no more, you know, is used wrongly. Um, and it, it, it sickens me that abusers prey on those with a dream. It sickens me. And I'm really happy that people are talking up about this right now. It's time. It's, it's time. And um, there's more stories, but I think the message of this one is how you can overcome it. It's not easy, not at all. But it gets easier over time, for sure. And I find things that help are lots of yoga. I'm sat on a yoga mat right now, you can't tell, but I am. <laughs> um, lots of yoga and meditating and putting, just putting your mind into something that you love, you know, that's such a great outlet. And not to avoid a situation, like if you are in a domestic violence household of some sort right now, you know, my escape route was, you know, being creative. <laughs> Hello, I just write. And, uh, you know, that helped me form my, like, bubble. But that was to just, like, avoid the noise, you know? That is why I find comfort in the chaos. It's bizarre, you know? Your upbringing completely, obviously, creates who you are. Um, God, I lost my train of thought. This is all very hard stuff to talk about. I feel like it's going to take more than one video. <sighs> but I do feel a lot lighter for just getting some shit off my chest, you know? 
and hopefully whoever is watching this I can inspire you um, to find the strength to get out because I'm living proof that there is light at the end of the tunnel I am somewhere safe right now look even padded walls I'm not that crazy yet <laughs> I'm in the studio I'm in England back here again a year later and um, everything is different I feel a lot stronger and um, I hate saying um, sorry I said that <laughs> well I have um, I have shown Nigel too many things he only has one eye left and I don't I feel terrible for just what I am yet. I feel terrible for what Nigel Bear has seen so I just really don't want you or anyone to let your children go through anything like what I've been through just get out while you can is my advice <sighs> but you know what we're all speaking up and we're all here together and that is a positive beautiful thing and uh, the bastards will not win <laughs> Stay strong. I love you. This one's for them. Oi, oi. Bye, darlings.